Can you be good? Well, on? I often say that uh, we'll, we'll, we'll stop when the banks stop committing fraud. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think, uh, are they going to ever stop committing fraud? At this rate, probably not. No. But no there's no deterrent. Nobody's trying to stop them. Uh, it's like that old Woody Allen joke, you know. He said, uh, he goes to the doctor and says, Doctor, my, my brother thinks he's a chicken. And the doctor says, here, give him these pills. And he says, no, no, you don't understand. We need the eggs. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, this, yeah. this economy needs the fraud. Yeah. The UK economy needs fraud. That's the cash flow that, that is the base mm. of the economy. If they took the fraud away, the entire economy would collapse. I remember actually, I remember I've heard you tell that joke before and that was on your part on the Zeitgeist Moving Forward documentary. Oh, it's in that? Lessons from the Brain Damaged Investor. Oh we yes, I'm in the that. Zeitgeist uh, movie. That whole, the whole thing that the Zeitgeist Movie deals with is that concept of ephemeralization, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, against Malthusianism. Mm -hmm. I know what Malthusianism is. What's the second one? The first one? Ephemeralization is a term... Ephemeralization? Yes. Okay. I probably how you pronounce it. It's a term coined by Buckminster Fuller, you know. Yes, uh, of course. Yeah. And the concept is that I mean, I know you're familiar with the concept already, but the the um, ability to produce a lot of goods, high quality, quickly, goes up and up and up with the energy input going down and down and down until you can create everything with nothing, effectively. Um, and it facilitates access abundance. So, Well, there's something in uh, technology called the asymptotic curve, when the, uh, the, the costs of bandwidth processing and um, memory are constantly going to zero. Yeah. So uh, we so the raw material of the digital economy being electrons, it's close to costing zero. Mm -hmm. So you have Google or Facebook or these companies, they can become multi hundred billion dollar companies. You know, they can put by by adding another ten million users, they would add like one more server. Mm -hmm. You know, so the 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 costs there are, are incredible. We've never seen anything like it in the history of economics, the leverage that you can get in the digital space. So, I mean, I understand what he's saying there. Uh, the, these two things are competing with each other. But the legacy players, like the United States, want to stick to the petrol dollar. They want the oil. Mm. They want to stay to uh, carbon fuel. Yeah, because it's Malthusian. Like, it's like the opposite. They love the Malthusian like, aspects yeah. of it because it gives them control. They can keep people in prisons. You know, mm. the prison industry is high growth industry in America. It's a private industry in America. Mm. So this is all this, uh, this uh, Malthusian concept where it's... Uh, you know, um, limited resources with a geometrically expanding population. And so, but they love the control and, and they don't want to give up the control and they're willing to start wars spuriously uh, to, to maintain that control. And it's funny to see John Kerry, the Secretary of State now, he's very, very frustrated because his propaganda, their justification for war, I mean, leading up to the Iraq war where they said we had a little vial, uh, of talcum powder and therefore we need to mil uh, kill a million Iraqis because of this little vial of talcum powder, you know, Colin Powell was trying to tell everybody. That ability, that high level of propaganda has been pulled out from underneath John Kerry. So he's the first Secretary of State in a long, long time, maybe ever, that has no ability to lie to the globe as his predecessors have because outlets like RT just say, well, John Kerry just said this, and clearly it's wrong for these following reasons, and then he's left completely flat-footed, and they and they can't come up with the lies fast enough. They run, they 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 fit peak lying. They can't come up with these lies, and they're just they they're like Victoria Newland. You know, she was caught engaging in a coup in Ukraine, and you know she's caught on tape staging the coup and lying through her teeth and propagandizing for this coup. And, 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 you know, RT, of course, and many other networks just put it on their network and say, well, here she is clearly lying. And people are like, oh, we get it. She's a, she's a cunt, you know, <laughs> so. I got a personal question for you. Do you do this because, you know, it niggles you, it bothers you, and it aggravates you? Or do you do this out of, do you do what you do out of a empathy for the sufferers and strugglers that are affected by the uh, activities of these schmucks? I think uh, I like. The, I think of it in terms of uh, having an aesthetic value. Mm -hmm. So right now, the media um, uh, you know, environment in the world, similarly to the banking environment in the world, is is aesthetically horrendous. It's very monochromatic. There's it's 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 not terribly dynamic. It's um, it, it's like designed by Strat fools and, yeah. and and people who are like Victoria Newland, you know, functional idiots. 
So aesthetically, I find this abhorrent. Uh, so by by doing our show, it brings it brings actually an aesthetic quality. Like there's dy dynamism. There's there's an interesting different points of view. There's a uh, there, there's a lot of uh, frisson going on. You know, there's something happening. So it's it's, it's exciting. Hmm. So uh, you know, I like to I like to live in a world where there's more opinions out there and a greater journalistic integrity. Yeah. So if it means I have to be the one to supply that journalistic integrity to make the world a better journalistic place, then I'll step up and do it. It's not not necessarily what I was trained to do, but I mean, I just have I think more as as the aesthetic choice, mm -hmm. like. Why don't we just make the news interesting by offering truth? Hmm. You know, okay, let's put truth into the mix. I know in the banking sector, it's very easy to speak truthfully about it because I was in the industry for so long. I know the industry so long. So I simply uh, will just add the actual truth bits, mm -hmm. and then people can, f can use the truth as the foundation for the lies that they're hearing from HSBC, Lloyds, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, these banks. And then they have the ability at least to understand they they can get entertainment value from Fox, ABC, NBC, and it's interesting. We're, in, in this year, all these media outlets are caught lying through their teeth. So Andrew Neil at the BBC had to make a and, and Joe Coburn a, a big apology, public apology for their sloppy journalism. Brian Williams at NBC had to step down. Uh, Bill O'Reilly now being called out on massive lies that he's made. Uh, BBC caught fabricating Channel Four. Kathy Newman, massive hate speech scandal. Uh, you know, Telegraph uh, and HSBC, massive scandal. I think this is all happening because RT has decided to compete on a on a meritoc meritocratic basis and just say we'll just go in there with the truth and see what happens. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think people are just and and so these major media outlets are having a collective nervous breakdown. Their lies are getting more egregious. The anchors are, are, are self imploding. Uh, so, and we, RT keeps expanding. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's good for us. I struggle to believe that it's uh, purely aesthetic. Your reason is because I've seen the emotion that you show in some of the, especially well, some again, of the. Again, there's a balance that goes into it. So, when you watch uh, news, typically on the BBC, there's very little emotion, and they consider that to be a, a virtue. Mm. So, they are really talking automatons, and they're just mouthing, they're just parroting nonsense. And and they'll and and therefore to be to have it a like an anger or an emotion, it's it's bringing some balance to that. Mm. So so for every, you know, for every Evan da Davis on the BBC Newsnight for his lack of of of, uh, uh, of depth, I would say as a human being, there you know there needs to be something out there that is you know going to going to air on the other side of of the equation and offer some actual a view into an actual person having an actual motion about an actual misjustice of mm. a mis, uh, miscarriage of justice in, in real time mm. so we again try to bring some balance I, I got one more question for you if we've got time yeah one more sure okay how are we going to solve this problem of scarcity is counter to human well-being as far as i can tell like it's you, you see people with suffering in scarcity, they can't get access to proper medical resources, proper clean food, quality goods. <clears throat> How can you have access abundance and still maintain a price mechanism for value? Yeah, well, that's an excellent question, and I invented a technology called the Virtual Specialist Technology mm. back in the 90s, which is a technology for creating virtual securities and a virtual currency over a virtual exchange. And it addressed this exact question because the potential for new users is almost infinite. So how do you how do you create price parity within an exchange? So I invented this thing called the virtual specialist, which became the basis for the Hollywood Stock Exchange, mm -hmm. but also the basis for what's called the prediction market industry. It was also the basis upon which all of the uh, derivatives, financial derivatives that have been created in the last 15 years are based on this technology. My technology is referenced hundreds of times mm -hmm. by many banks around the world. And on, what happened was it was seen as a threat and it was essentially warehoused now by a bank on Wall Street. They took control of that technology and they, they don't let it into the public domain. Mm -hmm. That technology, if it were allowed to function as I designed it, would, mm -hmm. would do exactly what you're suggesting, create price, a, a pricing environment within a, a, an environment of, of, of infinite uh, demand. And, and um, but uh, it, it's it's been warehouse. It's been taken off the market, shockingly, um, and, and it's it's quite sad. After they uh, they essentially uh, took control of the technology using a transaction that 
that is that that I think by my the way I see it is a completely illegal transaction. Mm. They they took control of this technology. Just a few months later, they got whacked by 9/11, mm. and 600 of their folks uh, got you know met their maker. So um, you know maybe that maybe that was a sign that they should behave as better citizens. Yeah. You know that don't steal people's technology, don't thwart somebody's effort to bring uh, this this cornucopia of, of freedom to, to the world. I mean, you, know, you, you, you dance with the devil and, uh, you know, you have the outcome is not great.